Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mian. My name is Elizabeth Gonzalez. And my name is Kelly Gonzalez. Welcome back to this week's episode of Earth's Eccentrics. Today's episode is centered around the essential question, what do stories about the future say about the present? When relating these futuristic stories to the modern world, the most prominent themes are about how technology can result in self-sabotage, how we may become dependent on devices to complete minor daily tasks, and how various forms of media are heavily relied upon. Self-sabotage is discussed in various stories where they have the idea that in the future, we would see us people self-sabotage ourselves through the technology we created. Even in the present, we do expect that technology will go wrong and there can be destruction that can come from it. This is a given and we see it in movies such as Terminator and WALL-E as well as these texts. The stories like There Will Come Soft Rains show how we picture technology harming us, and the story of the nuclear tourists and the videos of the Fukushima show how there are instances where we have already seen technology cause destruction. Technology's main purpose is to make our lives simpler and quicker. We have already made huge advances in technology that have proven to be very effective. And when we were first introduced to the story, There Will Come Soft Brains, I feel like we weren't surprised by how much advanced technology was involved in it because of the fact that we've already created very similar devices like Alexa or remote-controlled vacuums. And the story was based on what we believe our future could be, like based on the present. And we have shown that we believe this is a high chance technology will be flawed at, at some point. And in this case, it could end in destruction or chaos. And in the War of Worlds broadcast from the Orson Welles program, we see how radio during the 1930s was the most relied on form of media for news and entertainment. And in the myth of the War of Worlds panic article, the impressionability of people from news and false information is addressed, which can be seen in regards to social media and how easily false news is spread today. Yes, the amount of people that believed that Martians uh, were actually invading planet Earth during 1930s was pretty small, but the fact that many thought the broadcast caused such a widespread panic is an example of how influential media can be to persuade people. The PBS documentary on the incident and journalists like Ben Gross in 1954 greatly exaggerated the statistics of people that went into full-blown panic, which they claimed was hundreds of thousands. But Radiolab and authors Jefferson Pooley and Michael Sokolo to give upon themselves to shoot down these claims. And thank you to today's sponsor, RoboVacuum. Do you get tired of vacuuming your home? You deserve to relax while the house gets clean. Well, now you can by buying the latest household technology. Get your premium RoboVacuum today. Pair it via Bluetooth Alexa. Simply say, Alexa, activate RoboVacuum. RoboVacuum is the best choice. To activate, just use your voice. The first 500 people to order get 25% off RoboVacuum. Alexa not included. For more information, call us at 600-600-CLEANHOUSE. Now back to today's podcast episode. I find it funny how technology is so advanced that it is normal to have a robot to do household chores like vacuum your house or having Alexa to turn off your lights or remind you about things. Exactly. We've created devices that do the simplest of tasks. Like you mentioned, Alexa turns lights on and off and also calls your friend and family, which are tasks that we're fully capable of doing on our own. At what point will we put a limit to what technology has to do for us? And if you think about it, we first created a phone to make communication easier. And then we made a device that uses our phones for us, which would be Siri. And we've even gone as far as to replace people's jobs with technology. That's so true, Elizabeth. Technology is useful, yes, but we must regulate our use for fear that we would become so dependent on it. For example, in WALL-E, like Sarah mentioned, the people living in space are completely reliant on technology to survive. Also, when technology is so advanced to the point where we lose control over it, we have to consider self-sabotage as a potential threat. If there is an issue in relations between nations that results in war, we see the devastating consequences of having our technology, such as nuclear arms, go unchecked. The short story, There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Badbury, implements both of these concepts with the hinting of a nuclear disaster and the aftermath with the automated house slowly dying off with no owners to keep it functioning properly. 
Yeah, when we look at the essential question we're discussing, we can see that in the present, we sort of picture the future to be heavily reliant on technology, which shows that today, in the present, we believe that human society will create many advancements. Right now, we are curious about things that have happened because of our technology, and we want to explore more about it. Like, if you were to wor- look at the War of the Worlds, the broadcast talks about how aliens from Mars come to Earth. We certainly don't have aliens from Mars coming to Earth, but we have sent rovers to Mars, which show that in the time between when the War of the Worlds was written, and now we have had major technology advancements. Definitely. What happens when these overpowered weapons get into, like, let's say, the wrong hands and are used against us? Like, what was the addition of such deadly aspects? And was it worth it if we can't ensure complete control over what we create? Along with the advancements of technology that will help us, I also feel that we humans have already decided that technology we create can have issues and that could possibly lead to our destruction or sabotage us. The nuclear tour shows that we already have cities such as Chernobyl that have been destroyed or are unable to hold human life because of the radiation from the nuclear weapons that have been created by technology. The sheer destructive power of technology is insane, but so is its persuasive power in forms of media. I see false news all the time on social media, and while social media helps us to connect with one another, it also allows for the rapid spread of misinformation at previously unparalleled speeds. Yeah, we've even come to rely on technology for daily tasks that it seems we now believe we hear from it too. Technology plays a big part in news as anyone could edit it to seem realistic, thus spreading ideas and rumors that aren't accurate. But we think if it looks or sounds real, then it's trustworthy. I definitely agree with the point Elizabeth brings up by saying that anyone can edit things, which adds to false news, miscommunication, and conflicts. There are all these stories of how things can go wrong in the future. Needless to say, we should also use these ideas to prevent major disasters. We also need to learn to stop relying so heavily on technology. Our future is in our hands, and it's up to us to make sure that we do not create technology that could cause our demise, and instead use technology to help us make a better future. Thank you.